In this tutorial, we're going to take the vectors that we created in the Rocket Nameplate Drawing tutorial and then we're going to toolpath them to create what you can see on screen at the moment. We're going to be using a few different toolpaths, so we're going to pocket originally in between here and the text. We're, in, we're then going to add a texturing toolpath to where we actually did pocket out and we're going to overcome some of the issues that were involved whilst creating the texturing toolpath. We're then going to create a drilling toolpath and then we're going to finalise this part by creating our profile cutout pass and we're going to add some tabs to this to keep the part in place while machining. So let's start by opening a copy of the software and let's open the vectors that we drawn in the previous video. Don't worry if you didn't join along in that video, we do have a pre-prepared file that uh, is joined with this video. So let's just open that and let's get toolpathing. So to make things easier for ourselves, we're just going to group a few vectors together. So we know that we want to do a pocket toolpath in between this vector and our text. So to make things easier for ourselves, what we can do is we can select this vector and we can hold shift down and select our text and we can come over to group selected objects and what this will do is this will then treat them as one. So as you can see, if I deselect and then select that, they're both selected at the same time. So let's do that again for the drill holes. So I'm just going to select this and then I'm going to hold shift down on the keyboard and go around and select my other drill holes. Now we can do this with a shortcut on the keyboard. So we can simply do this by pressing the letter G. And as you can see, that's done the same thing. And now we can go over to the toolpath tab. So we can go to that by selecting this option here, or we can select F12 on the keyboard. Before we go ahead and create any toolpaths, we should always make sure that we check our material setup. So to do that, simply come up to the material setup and press the set button at the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and just double check over these just to make sure that these are all relevant for me. So I do know that I do want it on a half inch thick material. And I am going to start the machine from the lower left hand corner, as in our drawing here. I can see that the clearance and plunge moves are all going to be 0.2 inches above the material and our home start position and I do want that to be an x0, y0 and I can actually just lower this down a little so I'm just going to set our home z to be about half an inch above the material so when I'm happy with that click close the first toolpath that we're going to create is the pocket in between this vector here and the text. So come over and simply select the vector and you'll notice that since we've grouped them they'll both be selected together. And then come over to the pocket toolpath icon. So when we're in here it'll ask us to specify a few options. So I'm going to start the cutting at the top of the material so that's zero zero. I'm going to cut to a depth of an eighth of an inch, so 0 0.125. And for this, I'm going to use an eighth inch tool. So let's go to the tool database. And as you can see, I actually don't have an eighth inch end mill. So what we can do is we can just copy uh, an existing tool. So let's choose the quarter inch. And we can just use this button here to copy. And what that's going to do is just going to copy all the data from this tool into a new one, which is virtually the same and we can just use that then to edit a few parameters. So the first thing we might want to change is the diameter of the tool. So we know that's going to be an eighth of an inch. Let's just type that in there. And we want to make sure that the pass depth is fine for our tool. I'm just going to leave that as an eighth of an inch. And the step over at 40% is fine. I'm just going to make sure that I change the name of the tool so it doesn't get mistakenly selected as a quarter inch. and just state that as the eighth inch tool there. And these are all specific to your machine, so you need to make sure that your machine's capabilities are all adhered to here. So let's make sure you check the feed rates and the plunge rates of your machine. And when we've done that, we can click apply. And what we might want to do is just keep this in a logical order. We can highlight this and we can then just drag it to the top position so that then it goes down from eighth to quarter to half inch. And when we've done that, we can simply press OK and that tool will be selected. For this pocketing, I'm going to use an offset strategy. So, and that's already selected, so I can just simply leave that check there. 
and I'm just going to give this a name. I'm going to call this pocket text and then I'm going to hit calculate and the software will bring us automatically to the preview toolpath form so it will bring us from the 2D view straight into the 3D view so that we can then preview the toolpath to make sure it will look okay when running it on the machine so let's first of all let's just preview that and just tilt that around a bit so you can see what it's going to look like and within this preview toolpath form we can change the material look so we can change this to say like a Canadian maple for instance or maybe even pine but for this particular design I'm going to keep this as the cherry and we can even to make things more visible to as to what we actually pocketed out we can even give the toolpath its own colour so if I just select the toolpath colour here and then I'm going to choose a dark red for this all the dark red areas is exactly where the tools run and then machined away. So we can go ahead and now close this form and we can carry on uh, with the rest of our toolpaths. So for our next toolpath we're going to add some texture to our pocket. So simply go back to the 2D view and check to make sure that our originally selected vectors are still selected and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the texture tool pathing icon. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select an 8th inch ball nose tool. So let's select to go into our tool database. And I'm just going to expand our ball nose tool selection. I'm just going to select the 8th inch there. Just going to select the default values here, but if you are going to run this on your machine, just to make sure that all of these are for your machine and then just press OK. The start depth for this toolpath is going to be an eighth of an inch because we have pocketed down already an eighth of an inch so we're going to have to make sure that the tool does go that deep first. So just select 0.125 in there. The next thing we do is specify our texture settings. And this is where we specify different values for the cut depth, cut length, the overlap of the cuts and the step over and this will all generate a random texture that we can then use to in our pocket. Now I've been playing around with a few values and I recommend that you do this too. But for this tutorial I'm just going to specify ones that I've noticed that do work for me. So I'm going to specify 0 0.03 as the max cut depth. For the max cut length I'm going to specify half an inch. For the max overlap I'm going to specify 20%. And for the step over I'm going to specify 0 0.05 of an inch. I'm not going to specify any angle, so I'm just going to leave that as 0 degrees. And then I'm just going to call this Texture Pocket. And then I'm going to click Calculate on that. You'll notice again that the software has brought us to the Preview Toolpaths form. So we can now preview this. And you'll notice that something has gone wrong here. So if we just preview that, you'll notice that this texturing has now eaten away at our rocket text. So we'll just zoom in a bit there, you can see that it's just etting to all the characters. And the reason it's done this is because when calculating the toolpath for the texturing, it takes the centre of the tool up to the line of where our K would start. So the radius of the tool has eaten into the character on all the sides here. So what we can do to rectify this is simply go back into the texture toolpath and then we can specify to have a boundary vector offset. Now we can do this just over half the radius of the tool. So I'm just going to specify here, so 0 0.07. So if we go ahead and then recalculate this, and we're going to have to reset the preview, otherwise it's not going to show us any changes. So if we just click that, and then we want to, first of all, we want to re-preview the pocket text. So just select that, and then select a preview and then we want to then preview our texture above on top of that so let's just select that and then select a toolpath colour I'm just going to select the same to be dark red and just preview that and we can see now if we just zoom in a bit we can see that the texturing hasn't gone uh, and eaten away at each of the text and it's also left a tiny gap in between the texturing and the actual uh, text itself which is the extra allowance that we specified on top of the radius
So if we just zoom out again. And what we can do to make things easier is we can actually have both the 2D view and the 3D view on the screen at the same time. So we can do this by going to view and we select to tile the windows horizontal. And it makes sense to have them horizontally as this part is quite long lengthways. So that enables us to see both the 2D view and the 3D view. So with these both visible, I'm going to deselect in the white space in the 2D view and now I'm going to select our drill holes because the next one we want to do is the drilling toolpath. So just click close on the preview toolpath form and then go to the drill toolpath. And we want to specify our start depth to be the top of the material so we know that to be 0, 0. And the cutting depth, let's say we forgot and we can simply just press Z equals and that will let us know that we have half inch material that we've selected. Next I'm going to select an eighth inch tool to do our drill holes. So I'm just going to select an eighth inch emerald there. Now you don't actually have to select an eighth inch emerald, even though we did specify to have eighth inch holes. We can actually specify any tool uh, of any size and it will just drill to the centre of this circle. We can also specify if we want to use PEC drilling. What this will do is this will drill down a certain depth and it will retract up whatever depth you specify. It will just help with uh, chip clearance. But for this we're not going to select that. And next we can just specify this a name. So I'm just going to call this drill holes. And then I'm going to click calculate. And we can see that it's now selected our drill holes toolpath and it's now visible on a 3D view. So we can see where the tool would come from. So it would come in from the lower left at our XY start position. And go to this hole and then it would follow this path to do all our drill holes. So we can just preview that. The last thing for us to do is to create our profile cutout path. So if we just close the preview toolpath form and then we, in the 2D view, select the outer vector and then we go to the profiling toolpath icon here and we can specify our parameters. So we want to start on the top of the material and want to cut as deep as the depth of the material. So I'm just going to put Z equals in there and that will let us know that we've got half an inch to cut through. I'm going to specify an eighth of an inch end mill. So I'm just going to select to open our tool database and then I'm going to select to choose our eighth inch end mill that we created earlier and press OK. I'm going to make sure that we are machining on the outside of our vectors. So we'll just make sure that this is checked here. And then we're going to add a few tabs to our cutout pass. So simply come down to this tab here and select this checkbox to add tabs to toolpath. And we can specify the length of these. So I'm going to specify these to be a quarter inch in length. And I'm going to specify these to have a thickness of 0.1. And if we click on the Edit Tabs button, this will bring us into the Tabs form. So I can select to actually have a constant number of tabs around this vector here. So I'm just going to select to have four. And I'm going to click to Add Tabs. Uh, this has just added them uh, at equal distance around this vector. But what we can do is we can maneuver them to a more appropriate places. So as you can see, this one may have ended up on the corner. So we may want to move that one. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to click and hold on the mouse and you see that we can just drag that around so I'm just going to drag that to there and I'm going to do the same for all these so I'm just going to position them into like a northeast southwest type of configuration and when we've finished added those we can just simply click close on the toolpath tab on this there and then we can just specify this a name so I'm just going to call this profile cutout and then just click to calculate that. So if we just maximise the 3D view by clicking this button here, we can take a closer look at the toolpath. So you can see that it's built up of multiple passes, and then you'll notice that it's got uh, a little section here which represents the actual creation of our tab. So it's going to come along the tool, and it's going to follow this line, it's going to get to here, and it's going to retract a little, and it's going to carry on going this way and it's going to plunge back down into the final depth. So if we just zoom back out into like an ISO view and then we just preview that last toolpath 
and we can see how our product is going to look. And we can also see that it has left us the tabs, as we could see. So if we're happy with that, the thing that we could do next is simply close the preview toolpath form and we could then go into the sale toolpaths icon and we could then select each individual one of these toolpaths and then save them out with the correct post processor for your machine. What I'm going to do next is I'm simply going to save our file as a separate file so I'm just going to come to file and save as and I just want to save a separate file with our toolpaths included so I'm just going to call that rocket underscore nameplate underscore toolpaths and then hit save and that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching